All right. Good morning, everyone. Give it a check. It's uh, seven minutes after nine o'clock. I hope all of you are doing fine. It's a uh, it's a beautiful Friday morning, and uh, it's so good to see all of you again in this uh, weekly uh, webinar brought to you by AGF Consulting Group. And uh, I hope you're all safe and uh, you're staying healthy uh, wherever you are in the office, in in in, in at home, or Maybe even some of you are joining us mobile. <laughs> okay, good morning, everybody. Yesterday we had a we had a fantastic uh, one whole day webinar, and uh, maybe some of you were there yesterday. So uh, thank you so much for joining us yesterday. We have a whole day discussion on ISO nineteen thousand eleven, and uh, it was fun. So I hope to see you again in our future webinars. But uh, today we're going to talk about uh, process uh, auditing and. Uh, uh, basically, the focus today is uh, the tool called Turtle Diagram. Maybe some of you are familiar with the Turtle Diagram already, especially those who have been auditing for quite some time, or maybe you're, some of you are new to this. What exactly is this Turtle Diagram and how do we use this uh, in, in, in process uh, auditing? So, uh, and, and by the way, before I forget, next week we're going to dive uh, deeper into corrective action reporting because most of you send us e message, email, even messages in the Facebook and YouTube to uh, also include in the program some really detailed discussion on how to draft a corrective action report uh, in conformance to ISO 9001-2015 and other ISO standards. So please uh, watch out for that. We're going to do that again next week. All right. So now I think we can just uh, dive straight into our discussion here as to what is the turtle diagram and how do we use it in uh, process auditing. Now, first things first. Our assumption here is that you have been auditing already your quality management system, okay? Or whether it's uh, ISO 14, the environmental management system, or occupational health and safety, the ISO 45, or even information security management system. And um, our, our basic assumption here also is that you are already familiar with the standard. For example, for ease of discussion, we're going to use ISO 9001. 2015 or the quality management system. So our basic assumption here again is that you already know the details of your ISO 9001. Okay, a basic rule of thumb in auditing is that you cannot audit what you do not know. Okay, so that's our basic assumption there. Um, so today we're, we're we're going to take a look at this tool called Turtle Diagram. What, what is this? What is this all about? How do we use it in process auditing? And uh, so my, my, my fellow internal auditors, if you have been doing internal quality audit, uh, let's uh, dive into this uh, tool called the Turtle Diagram. Now again, the Turtle Diagram, just to give you a background there, is, is a very powerful tool in terms of showing you visually uh, the end-to-end the -end, uh, uh, process, all right? And uh, it, it shows you a detailed map of, of how a procedure actually works. And like I said, going back to my basic rule of thumb, you cannot audit what you do not know. So if you're going to audit a procedure, you better be familiar with this procedure. Where, where does it start? What are the steps? What is the sequence? What's the criteria? Who are the persons responsible? What materials are they going to use? What are the risks involved? And, and what's the end result of the finished product? So these details or informations you need to understand even before you can audit uh, this procedure. So, so with this turtle diagram, it, it, would, it would give us a visual understanding, a visual map of, of how the process operates, okay? So how the process operates. Now, uh, this is, this is uh, uh, let's, let's dive straight into it, okay? This is the turtle diagram, by the way, okay? So imagine it's a turtle. <laughs> In some templates, you probably see they're using an actual turtle. But uh, for, for purposes of discussion, just imagine that oblong in the middle is a turtle, okay? So now you understand why, uh, why it's called a turtle diagram, because it has uh, six components, or it has six parts into it. So let me uh, use my annotation right here. Okay, so if you can see this, uh, we have inputs, all right? So inputs basically is the, the head, the head of the turtle, okay? The head of the turtle. While output would be the, the tail of the turtle, okay? Now this is fun because when you audit, you just mental, mentally imagine the turtle. And, and you can easily 
go through your audit interview. Okay. Obviously, this is the uh, front uh, right tail. Uh, sorry, front uh, right uh, leg, and this is the front uh, left leg, and so on and so forth. Okay. So it has six uh, parts into it. And uh, well, personally, when I do audit, I, I start from from the head. Okay. So I start from the head. I I, I then continue with the tail, and then the front. Uh, uh, leg and so on and so forth. All right. So, uh, all right, there you go. So, it, it becomes an easy guide when you do your audit uh, interview. So, so again, the, the head represents inputs. Okay. So, if we have a process, we need to understand first what are the inputs to this process. By the way, just, just to clarify, in, 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 uh, in ISO auditing, for example, in uh, when you're auditing your ISO 9001. Um, there, there, are, there are two types of audit there. You do system audit and process audit, okay? Just to make it very clear, system audit and process audit. So uh, first, uh, what is a system audit? Uh, just let me uh, explain this process audit with you. But first of all, system audit. System audit basically is a more of, it's, it's, a, it's a broad look at, uh, at the functionality, adequacy, compliance, and effectiveness of the system. So we're, we're auditing clause four up to clause 10, okay? That's system audit. And the system audit is normally conducted by the lead auditor. So the lead auditor has to check all the elements of the system. While a process audit, on the other hand, a process audit on the other hand, uh, as, as the name dictates, is that it's very focused uh, towards uh, auditing the process itself. So that's why uh, the lead auditor Having audited the system, the lead auditor would normally assign procedures or process to the audit team members so that the audit team members can themselves audit a particular or specific process that is assigned to them. For example, I'm, I'm a process auditor. I report to a lead auditor and the lead auditor assigns to me a procedure, the procedure on preventive maintenance. And so I would focus my audit on preventive maintenance. All right. Whatever that is, maybe you're assigned to audit training development, you're assigned to audit software design or marketing or back office support procedures. These are called process audit. And when we do internal quality audit or internal environmental audit, whatever that is, it's specific towards a particular process. So it's crucial here to understand exactly how the process works or how the process operates. Okay, Hence, the process audit. So what you can see right now is a turtle diagram again, and uh, obviously this tool is specifically for process audit. All right. So we we, we take a look at uh, what, what's the input of the process. So the input basically is in the head of the turtle, and of course, uh, what what are the outputs? What are the outputs of this product or product or process or quote unquote the finished product? If you're a service-oriented organization, of course, um, what's, the, what's the end result? What's the service? What's the deliverable? And then um, you should also take a look at the materials right here. So what materials are we going to use? What equipment? Anything that you need to have in order for you to successfully run the process. And uh, another box here, which is now the rear uh, right leg of the turtle, talks about uh, persons responsible, who's in charge, okay? And not only that, you can also take a look at the competence requirements, all right? What are the skills needed? What trainings do they need to have in order for them to effectively, if not efficiently, implement this uh, uh, processing subject? And of course, right here on the upper uh, front leg, that's how you should look at it because it's a turtle, uh, it's talking about, the, okay, the sequence, the order of the steps, the criteria, okay, methods, uh, including even risk, okay? And lastly, the rear hind uh, left leg that would complete the turtle would be what, what are performance indicators? How do we measure this process, okay? Are we, are we good so far? Uh, can, 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 can we follow this? I think it's a very simple concept to understand using the turtle diagram. We're just simplifying how do we use this turtle. Now, so what I need you to do right now is this. Uh, since this is a very short 45-minute uh, webinar, it's a micro-learning basically. Uh, I need you to now identify your procedure. Okay, identify your pr procedure. In, in ISO, we are all considered as process owners, all right? We are all process owners. So whether you are top management, you're in charge of a strategy, 
or whether you are middle management, you're in charge of uh, supervision or frontline in charge of maybe handling telephone calls, what is your process? Identify that right now, okay? Identify that. Maybe identify your top three procedures. What are your key, uh, crucial, mission critical procedures, uh, if I can say that, okay? Now, as soon as you have identified that, I need you to put that procedure in front of or in the middle of this circle diagram, right here in the process. So you can see this one, right? Process. That's where you should write that procedure. Just one, okay? What's your, what's your core process? Just write it here. Okay, just write it there. Um, this turtle diagram is basically broken down into two to three parts. So the first part here is basically populating this diagram. We, we have to fill this up with information, all right? So it has to be filled up with information based on what procedure you have identified. As soon as we have filled it up with information, the next step is to analyze it. I'll guide you in the analysis process later on. And the last part, of course, is uh, we will connect this to audit check listing, all right? I'm sure you're familiar with audit checklist. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I'm going to give you a you know, bonus discussion on audit checklist because audit checklist and the turtle diagram are two uh, inseparable um, tools that we are using in internal audit. Okay, so I would assume right now that you have identified your process, okay? All right, so let me check. Uh, there's a... Okay, uh, no questions so far. So, good morning, Miss Annie uh, Paredes Ornilio. Good morning, uh, Sir David Rojas. Good morning, Sir Romy, Romeo Tuazdon. Good morning, Sir Arvin Sato. Good morning. How are you, sir? It's been, it's been a while. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for DOST. Thank you always for, for following this program. Thank you very much. And uh, wow, thank you. From, from all across uh, the country, we have uh, uh, participants joining us in this webinar. Thank you. And I hope you're all learning. So uh, let's continue. Okay. Now, for purposes of this discussion, let's say I would identify a process on repairs and uh, maintenance. Is that okay? Uh, so let me uh, clear my annotations here. And uh, okay, let's say for example, I identify this repairs and maintenance. I think we can all relate to this because whether you're coming from a small and medium enterprise, a large organization, public or private, we all have preventive maintenance procedure. We all have repairs and maintenance, all right? So for purposes of discussion. So like I said, the first part of the turtle diagram is to uh, populate this, uh, fill this out, all right? Put details into the diagram based on the identified procedure. So our first question here is that after we have identified the process on repairs and maintenance, what do you think are inputs? What, are you, what do you think are inputs for repairs and maintenance? Help me out here. You can type in the chat box, uh, what do you think are inputs? How, how do we begin with this, uh, with this procedure? Okay, let me know. Maybe you're handling directly repairs and maintenance. Okay, but from my end, maybe uh, you, you, you type that in the chat box. Let me know what are inputs. What do you think are inputs for repairs and maintenance? In, in, in my end, maybe this is what I'll write here. I'll put job order request. What do you think? Okay. Because, of course, there has to be a job order request first. Uh, what about PM schedule or the preventive maintenance schedule? That can also be an input, right? So we need to take a look at the preventive maintenance schedule. Uh, what's, what's up for repairs and maintenance? Uh, because normally this vehicle or equipment has periodic uh, maintenance schedule. So we need to watch that. Uh, we, we need to, to watch out for that, right? And, and maybe inspection report. So maybe there's an inspection report that was submitted to the supervisor for repairs and maintenance. And so uh, that will be used as an input in order for this procedure to begin, right? Okay, so I, I guess you agree with me there. Let me check the chat box if you have some Oh, there you go, from Sir George, George uh, Legaspi. He's saying RFS, or request for service. Fantastic, very good example, sir. Or request for repair from Sir Joben uh, Gubatanga. Yeah, perfect. So I, I completely agree. So this is, this is how a procedure begins, right? So these are inputs. These are like trigger points. This would trigger uh, the execution of a procedure. So far, so good. Okay, now that we have identified the inputs, let's, let's go to outputs. We, we visualize, we imagine uh, what should be the end result, all right? What's the outcome of this procedure? And if, take note, huh, for purposes of discussion, let's talk about quality management system because the turtle diagram can be used for QMS, EMS, OSHAs, information security, food safety, 
uh, or whatever, whatever standard, whatever ISO standard. But for purposes of discussion, let's use QMS. So if we talk about outputs, uh, the output we should have in mind has, has something to do with quality, all right? It has to be a quality output, in other words, because we're talking of a quality management system. So uh, let me see what I have here. So the output, oh, well, before the output, <laughs> Before the output, let me go first to materials and equipment. Sorry about that. I got excited. Uh, let, let's go. Let's discuss first the front uh, right leg of the third belt. Okay. Let's take a look at what materials are we going to use here. Okay. Now, uh, what I have in mind is, of course, we need to have a motor pool, right? Uh, we need to have uh, parts, okay, like spare parts. Because, of course, when you do repairs and maintenance, you will have to do replacement. So, of course, you need to identify parts. Or maybe warehouse, right? Because that's where you store these uh, tools, equipment, uh, parts. And then maybe a machine shop, all right? And I've mentioned tools already. Let me know what you think. What should be included here, all right? In the materials. Serviceable equipment, according to Sir Joven. Yes, that's correct. Serviceable equipment. Uh, so, you list down all the, all the materials and equipment uh, that you need in order for you to run this procedure. So far, so good. Okay, so that's uh, with what. Now, let's move on. What about who are the person responsible? Okay, so who are the person in charge? Who is the process owner? So let me think. Uh, we, maybe we need a service crew here. The, you have service crew in charge of the repairs and maintenance. Maybe you have two, three, four, or depending on how big or small your organization is. Or maybe you have a chief mechanic. Or maybe you have some assistants working along with your supervisors and service crew. So, uh, so put, put, put it, everything there as, as far as your organization is concerned. And do not forget, I've mentioned earlier, you need to also identify their skills requirement or QS maybe, qualification standards. Or like I said, the training needs analysis of this, uh, of this uh, persons or process owner. Because with whom, it's not just enough to identify who is the person responsible. Take note, in ISO, there is a specific clause in 7.2, which talks about competence, right? So we need to identify these competence requirements. Let me check the chat box. Uh, yes, perfect. Mamani Mechanic uh, from server Helio Fuertes of DOST Region 10 Accredited Auto Shops List. Oh, yeah, that should be in the uh, materials and equipment as well, right? Uh, or even in the with whom, no? so we can include that. Because if you're outsourcing the repairs, for example, you're working directly with the dealership, then that would make sense. From Sir Joe Ben, authorized repair and maintenance officer. So you see, there's, there's that word authorized. No? So all of a sudden, there's this accreditation uh, requirement in order for them to uh, be able to execute it. So it, it's, it, it has some, some basic uh, accreditation requirements to uh, prove competence. So take note of that, all right? So far, so good. So we're, we're halfway into our turtle diagram. Let's take a look at uh, what's next. Okay, now let's talk about the methods. So the left front uh, leg of the turtle would like to discuss now about, okay, what's the method? How are we going to do this? What's the order or what's the sequence in implementing repairs and maintenance. And so I, I wrote it here, maybe we need procedural manual, all right? Do we have a procedure? Uh, do we have a document procedure for repairs and maintenance, like a flow chart, okay? And in the, in the flow chart, maybe it's also indicated there who is going to do what? Uh, what's the criteria maybe in every step? Or uh, what else? What are resources, no? So I think all those information should be in the procedure manual. Maybe we have guidelines. Uh, guidelines or specific work instruction. Maybe it's about painting. Maybe it's about uh, change oil. Maybe if it's about uh, 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 changing of uh, tires or things like that. So these are really more detailed work instructions as far as repairs and maintenance are concerned. Okay. Now, if you're a mechanic joining this <laughs> program, I'm sure you're enjoying this. <laughs> Um, and of course, policies as well. So uh, let me know what you think. What should be in the how? Algorithm. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so maybe from Sir Romy, it was an algorithm, all right? Maybe schematic diagrams. Okay, now we're, we're talking technical specifics here no? on, on how uh, do we execute the repairs and maintenance. If it's very specific to maybe uh, check up of... Uh, uh, water or injection pump or what have you, then you, 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 you should include it here, all right? Even just a simple monitoring. 
even just the simple uh, checking procedure, all right? Or even just the quality control procedure, you should include it here in the how, all right? Put it there. Uh, there's another message in the chat box, schematic diagrams, that is correct, so Richie Escanilla. Okay, um, now do not forget, all right? Do not forget your risk assessments. Right? Because in ISO 9001 2015, take note, even if it's the, like, well, it's across the different standards, whether it's EMS, uh, OSHAs, food safety, information security, risk, risk management is required. So uh, you have to ensure that in this how uh, box, all right, on the front left leg of the third cell, make sure that you include the risk assessment. Okay? So what are the risks involved here? Okay, what are the risks involved? So I would assume you have your own risk registers or your own maybe risk assessment plan or your risk plan or uh, risk matrix. No? So whatever that is, please add it there. Maybe it's included already in the procedure. From Mam Annie uh, Paredes or Nilio, routines and subroutines. Yes, that is correct. No? So you need to include that in the method. So as detailed as possible, put it here. All right. Now, moving on. Um, thank you so much for, for your for your inputs right there. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm also learning from you, by the way. Thank you so much. Let's go to the next box. What results? Meaning performance indicators, okay? Performance indicators. W what are metrics? In other words, this can be targets. Again, if I use ISO 9001 2015, if you go directly to clause 6.2, it talks about quality objectives, targets, and programs. And if you go to clause 4.4.1 of the QMS, it's also talking about metrics, criteria. So this is exactly what results uh, uh, is, is talking about. How do we measure this procedure in this turtle diagram? How do we measure it? If you can see in my slides, in my slide here, uh, I've mentioned here zero breakdown. All right, what about that? Zero breakdown. So maybe the target of repairs and maintenance is that <laughs> uh, there should be no breakdown whatsoever in the vehicles or in the equipment. All right, because other, otherwise the impact of that would be you know delay uh, in the operation. What about zero rework, okay? So it's not enough that, you know, when you send the vehicle to the machine shop or the motor pool and then they bring it out, they return it to the end user, that's it. You need, you need also to ensure that uh, they would not, you know, return and bring it back because, uh, again, after testing, there are, uh, there are still issues. So you need to return it for rework. Also the target there is zero rework. What about zero complaints? Okay, that's it. So I think that's also a valid uh, measure. What about zero backlog? So if you check your maybe preventive maintenance schedule, you have about the backlog of, backlog of 10 vehicles that is spending in the, you know, the motor pool. That's not good at all, right? So how do you measure it? Of course, when we speak of measurement, it has to be quantifiable. Let me go to the chat box here. Okay, zero injuries. Perfect, Sir Romy. Zero injuries. I think we can add it there. All right, so it's, uh, we have to also ensure the safety of our mechanics, safety at work. Uh, what about from, from um, any zero hazard, zero dangers? Yes, that's uh, pretty much related to zero injuries. Very good. Okay, that can also be a target. So uh, especially if you're implementing occupational health and safety, which is the ISO 45, that is a good metric. So it's, it's not enough that, you know, we complete it on time. Uh, it has to be timely completed with zero accident, uh, zero injuries in the uh, workplace. Okay, now finally, let's go to the last part. Okay, there's one more uh, input here from Sir Richie, uh, Richie Carroll, oh, Mom, Richie Carroll Escanilla, sustained spare parts and materials inventory. I completely agree. <laughs> because as we all know, um, uh, Mom Carol, sometimes always the issue here, not sometimes, but you know, always the issue that I get to hear from repairs and maintenance is that Sir John. We don't have available materials. There we go. Patay tayo dyan. <laughs> so that, that, that means we cannot, you know, continue with the repair. We cannot even commence or start with a, with a job order simply because we don't have a spare part. Ah, that's correct, Ma'am Carol. Well, well done. Well said. Very good thinking. Okay. So moving on. Thank you for your inputs. Let's go to the last uh, element here. Okay. Output. Ah, there you go. So again, okay, the output, help me out here. The output, as far as this repairs and maintenance procedure would be, of course, acceptance certificate, right? Don't you think so? So acceptance certificate to be signed by the end user. 
So for example, a particular unit section or division of the office requested, you know, gave the job order. And let's say after 24 hours, the job is completed. And so they endorse the vehicle or equipment back to the end user and the end user has to sign an acceptance certificate. Okay, so, you know, some sort of quality control there. Uh, what about endorsement? Yes, maybe, you know, so they endorse the unit again or equipment. What about vehicle test? Maybe there's, this is an output as well. What about the signed or close accomplish uh, job order? Speaking of accomplish, maybe the simple accomplishment report. So these are outputs. So what do you think are outputs as, as far as repairs and maintenance is concerned? Let me know what your thoughts are for the outputs. So now, our turtle diagram is finally complete, okay? So these are by far fundamental information or basic information that we can put in here. Now, remember this is just the first part. Like I said, it's broken into three parts, by the way. It's broken into three parts. So the first part is just to populate it. So obviously it's, 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 it's brainstorming. So you can just put there any information you think is relevant to this procedure and then analyze it, okay? So you brainstorm on, on what sort of information should be here. So when we, when, by the way, lastly, when we speak of performance indicators, others would, you know, you can either use hard data or soft data, either quantifiable or, you know, qualitative. So it's really up to you, all right? So personally, I would like to, you know, do a healthy combination of both quantifiable metrics and, and qualitative metrics, or hard and soft indicators. Okay, now, so far so good. Please give me a thumbs up sign if, uh, we are following the discussion. Participants, good morning, everyone. Um, okay, Mom Bell, Gaius, Sir Bernardo Avena, with Mom Claire, Joyce uh, Padin, thank you. Daphne Del Mundo, thank you for joining us. Uh, Jerome, uh, thank you. Okay, Joe, Joe Dan Torino, thank you so much. I think we're all following, right? This is a, this is a simple concept to, to understand. Thank you, thank you. Okay, now, moving on. So the next part here, since this is, this is, this is a tool used for auditing, so let's, let's shift into our uh, auditing uh, activity now. So for example, we're going to audit this process, all right? We're going to audit repairs and maintenance. Okay, so now it's, it's, the, audit, uh, it's the audit part. Now when you audit this, when, when, when you try to analyze or assess this procedure, what I, what I suggest we do is this, okay? So I suggest we take a look at only three areas here, okay? So what are these three areas? So first, I'd like to take a look at potential, all right? PNC, I'll call this PNC, okay? What is PNC? You can see that on the screen, okay? Uh, let me check. Okay, PNC, perfect, okay. Potential, PNC stands for potential nonconformity, right? Potential nonconformity. For purposes of discussion, ISO 19,000, for purposes of definition, okay, ISO 19,011 defined nonconformity as uh, non fulfillment of a specified requirement. That's a nonconformity, okay? So I think that's very straightforward. So, what do we think are potential nonconformities in this procedure? Okay, what do you think? Now, other than the second is, of course, uh, let's take a look. Maybe there, there are already actual, okay, there are already actual nonconformity or ANC, actual nonconformity. Th that is happening in this procedure. What are those? So you need to ask that. You need to, you need to analyze it now. And lastly, maybe we can also consider OFIs. You know? So as you all know, in the audit parlance, OFIs or observation, um, we can uh, identify opportunities for improvement. That's OFI or observations. Okay. So having said that, at least basically just three, uh, can we identify this in this turtle diagram? So help me here, please. So I probably begin here. No? So maybe in this in this uh, turtle diagram, maybe the potential nonconformance here would 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 be uh, right here on the parts. Ah, would you agree? I think that's a potential nonconformance. Why do I say it's a potential nonconformance? We need to know whether those parts are readily available. As mentioned earlier by, by one of the participants here, um, this can be an issue because the parts may not be readily available. And if the parts are not available, it would cause delays. And I think, now I, now I realize, maybe we can add uh, in the, 
performance indicators, zero delay. What do you think, right? So zero delay, okay? Zero delay. Because uh, it's also important that we'll have, you know, timely completion of the service required. Did you get that? So zero delay. So I think this is a potential non-conformance. Um, now, another potential, non it, it may even be an actual non-conformance already for all we know, okay? So another maybe potential non-conformance here is uh, this one, the training, okay? So I will check as an auditor whether uh, the service crew, chief mechanic, assistants who are involved in this process are updated in terms of uh, skills, okay? Um, in terms of their skills. And uh, so I'll, I'll basically ask for the uh, training needs analysis or maybe the training plan or even the copy of their uh, training certificates or training attendance, all right? Because this may be a potential unconformance, okay? This may be a potential unconformance. And uh, are, are we all following here, okay? Let me know what you think, okay? Let me know what you think. What you think is a potential non-conformance or what you think is an actual non-conformance, all right? I'd love to also hear from you. So, uh, so that's the second. Now, let, let, let me continue. Um, what else? What else do you think? What else do you think could be actual or potential uh, non-conformance here? Um, I'm thinking maybe in their procedure right here. Let me, let me go to the procedure. I'd like to know what are the what, what are the identified risk, okay? Because take note that in the new ISO 9001, uh, these procedures, uh, it should also uh, be clearly defined in terms of you know what are what are inherent risks, what are embedded risks. So my question here is that have they actually identified this risk, all right? So I'm, I I would like to know whether uh, the availability of suppliers is considered as a source of risk because more often than not maybe they find it hard to look for suppliers of these parts so that's that can also be a risk another factor there is that they have a very stringent uh, procurement procedure so that's why it's so hard to accredit all right or to um, uh, evaluate or uh, let alone qualify a supplier so that might be an issue okay so we have a uh, uh, okay, from, from, from Carol Escanilla, outdated procedures, work instructions posted in the relevant areas or access, access points. That is absolutely correct. That may be a potential actual non conformance as well. No? So, um, as, as Ms. Carol is, is, is talking, maybe this procedure itself is no longer updated. It's not, it's not of the current version already. So, that's another potential non conformance. Okay? So, are you following this? So, so now, this is the analysis part. This is the analysis part. Uh, like I said uh, a while ago. So this is the second part, okay? So you, you need to all identify this, um, the potential non-conformance, the actual non-conformance, and the opportunities for improvement. And mind you, as soon as you do that, you'll be able to discover quite a lot of uh, sur sur surprising insights and realization as far as this procedure is concerned. And that's just the first step, okay? As far as continuous, continuous improvement is concerned. So this is how you can continuously improve it. And remember, we're we're talking of audit here. So you're looking at the procedure with an auditor's perspective. From, from Ma'am Ani, budgetary requirement, availability of budget, absolutely, all right? From Sir Ruel, uh, Vincent Banal, budgetary requirement, absolutely. So you may also want to ask that question. So uh, do they have available resources? So that's part of resource, right? Yeah, we forgot to include that, budget under materials and equipment. Maybe that should be part here of, of resources, okay? Mm. What else? Uh, management commitment. Uh, what more can I say? <laughs> well said, Ms. Carol. <laughs> management commitment because leadership, after all, is clause five in the in the ISO 9001 standard. So, okay, I think I think you follow the drift here. So, um, okay, there's one more here. Uh, let me check from Server Helio Fertes. Approved procurement plan or PPMP. Ah, there you go. If you're a public agency or a, or a government office, yes, you must have that. You must have the PPMP, okay? And uh, if you don't have that, then that will also cause problems. No? So uh, from Mamani again, availability of signatories. Ah, 
tell me about it. <laughs> you know, the signatory is not in the office, and uh, the last time he reported to the office because there's this pandemic was four months ago. So who who, who can approve it? Nobody. You know, maybe you use an you know electronic signature. So, but this can be. This, this can all be issues, all right? Very good, very good participants. I love it, I love it. Thank you for your participation. So I think we're all in the same page here. Now it's uh, 9.42, I only have three minutes left. <laughs> so this is the second part, all right? So the first part is populate the turtle diagram. The second part is to analyze what are potential non-conformance, actual non-conformance, and opportunities for improvements. The last part is to do the audit checklist, all right? Because after all, this is uh this is this is audit all right this is auditing so let me just uh, share with you an audit checklist okay an audit checklist um so if i have that audit checklist uh with me okay so um, okay there you go let me share the audit this is the last part okay this is the last part so the audit checklist uh you may have your own audit checklist right so but uh if, if you don't have one uh you may uh, feel free to use this, okay? You may feel free to use this uh, audit uh, checklist. Uh, let me uh, see if that is properly shared. So the audit checklist basically contains your, obviously your questions, your audit questions, okay? So I think you can see this right there. It's on your screen. Let me just enlarge this. Uh, there it is, okay? So, um, oh, by the way, do not forget there's an exit survey. So Mike just reminded me about that. Right. So, okay. So this is this is a sample audit checklist. All right. So, like I said, you may have your own audit checklist. So what you can do is based on the turtle diagram. Okay, you just fill in the necessary information there. Uh, but the most important part here of, of the audit checklist is uh, is this. You need to of course put here all your questions. All right. So based on the turtle diagram. So uh, for example, my question earlier or the question I could probably uh, raise during the audit is if I go to the front left leg of the turtle my first question there is that uh do you have a documented procedure manual for repairs and maintenance is that a valid question the answer is yes all right now why do i say it's a valid question why it's a yes first things first you need to identify if you can link that with a particular iso clause all right now this is where it gets tricky <laughs> You need to always audit against specification. Let me repeat that. This is my second rule of thumb. If my first rule of thumb in auditing is you could not audit what you do not know, my second rule is that always audit against specification, all right? Against the specific clause of the ISO standard. And, and, and in this exercise, we're using ISO 9001 as an example. So let me go back to that question. My question is, do you have an established procedure manual for repairs and maintenance? What ISO clause am I going to use there? I'd probably use ISO, well, not probably, I'm very sure I use 4.4.1, okay? Clause 4.4.1. Because under clause 4.4.1, it talks about, you know, the organization shall establish uh, processes needed for its QMS and document it and make sure that this procedure has clearly defined the metrics, the sequence, the order, the criteria, the person responsible. In other words, I have a basis. Okay, I will not just randomly ask question, picking out question out of thin air. My questions are based on ISO clause. Are we following this? Okay, so this is the tricky part. That's why you need, you need to have with you always the copy of the ISO standard, all right? So make sure that you always connect. For, for the veteran auditors here, I'm sure they pretty much understand this. From Mom Grace Pastor, is there a direct link between parts of the turtle to specific ISO clause? That is a very good question. All right, I'll show the turtle diagram again, uh, Miss Grace, after this. The answer is yes, all right? There is a specific clause to each part of the turtle diagram. There's a direct link to that. Very good question. Okay, I'll show you in a short while. Let me give you another example. So another question here would be, uh, going back to the repairs and maintenance is this. Uh, are your um, crew members in the repairs and maintenance properly trained or is their training updated? What clause am I going to use? Definitely, you're going to use clause 7.2 because 7.2 talks about com competence, all right? The organization shall ensure that the persons involved to uh, conduct the process are, are competent, all right? And uh, their, 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 their impact to uh, the desired results are ensured because they, 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 know, they, they know how to do their job. It's talking about competence. So I think 
like uh, you basically understand this. So just open the, the, the standard, go to the clause, and make sure that you align the questions that you're going to ask, okay, as far as that is concerned. So, all right, now um, there's uh, another question here. Mm -hmm. Is there, okay, I think that's uh, the, same, the same related question. So, okay, I think, I, think that's, uh, I think that's clear. So make sure that you link the questions you're going to ask uh, with a with specific ISO clause. So let me just share with you again the turtle diagram, okay? So let me go back to the turtle diagram. And uh, so we can, we can link the turtle diagram uh, in, the, in the specific uh, clause, all right? That's, that's a very quite good question, by the way. So let me look for the turtle diagram again. And um, let's take a look at how we can directly link it. Okay, so far so good. I hope you, you are learning and I hope this would uh, greatly improve your uh, internal quality audit, all right? Because I can see there are auditors here who are quite new. They're just about to conduct their first audit and they're also very experienced auditors already in this room. So maybe this is a, a refresher course for them. So that's good. So going, going back to that question uh, earlier, can we actually uh, relate or directly link this uh, parts of the turtle diagram to a specific ISO clause? The answer is a huge yes, okay? So uh, I'll give you an example. So uh, let's say, let's go to uh, uh, this one, this part, the, the how, okay? So what, help you out here, okay? Uh, so maybe you, 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 you also have uh, access to your ISO standard right now. So uh, this one obviously is clause uh, four, okay? To be specific clause four, uh, point four point one. Now let me go back to that slide again. Okay, so uh, that one is clause four. Okay, clause four. Okay, so let me use my annotation. So this one is clause four. So how do you uh, how do you execute the process? That's clause four, specifically clause uh, four point four point one. Because like I said, it talks about the sequence, the order, the metrics. I can also use clause six here. By the way, what is clause six? Clause six talks about planning, okay? Clause 6.0 talks about planning. So it talks about risk assessment. It talks about identification of risk and opportunities, uh, particularly clause 6.2. So please, 6.2 also talks about uh, quality objectives, targets, and programs. You may also use clause 6.2 here, okay? Clause 6.2. So uh, as far as metrics are concerned, or you may use clause nine, okay? So because clause nine is talking about uh, measurement, analysis, and improvement. So how do we uh, measure it, okay? So we can also use uh, clause uh, four here as part of the inputs, so because uh, take note in clause 4.1, it's talking about what are external internal issues. So there may be issues pertaining to the process. Uh, who are the stakeholders? That's a clause 4.2, all right? Who are the interested parties? So in other words, you may also use clause 4.2 here. You know? So uh, just open your booklet, just open your ISO standard and you may be able to link it. Obviously, this is clause uh, uh, 7.0 because 7.0 is talking about support, in other words, resources. You know? So exactly uh, resources, all right? This one, resources. So uh, resources, meaning what's the infrastructure requirement, building, equipment, uh, what else? Um, communication. Uh, human resource, those are part of resources. Even documented information, to be exact, that's uh, clause 7.5, all right? You may also use 7.5 here, by the way, because the procedure should be properly documented. And you can use clause 8 here, uh, because clause 8 talks about um, how are they going, I'm sorry, clause 8 should be here, sorry. Uh, clause 8 should be here, okay? So because clause 8 talks about also, um, let's say procurement, okay, or even the calibration of equipment to be used, all right? Uh, that should be part of uh, the resources, okay? Are you following this? And uh, maybe you can use, uh, uh, well, clause nine, where do we use clause nine? There you go, clause nine is internal audit. So how do they audit or how do they monitor it? You can also use clause nine here in output, all right? Because uh, this is where we, we, we review the outputs or there's customer satisfaction involved are they satisfied? You may also use clause five here, management, responsibility, uh, or even clause 10, how do we improve it, all right? So all these clauses are really relevant, directly relevant to the elements or parts of uh, the turtle diagram, okay? So with that, are there any questions? So I hope you were able to learn uh, something new, 
uh, in this uh, short uh, webinar as uh, far as uh, you know, using the turtle uh, diagram is uh, concerned. And just to do a quick uh, recap here, all right, just to do a quick recap. And uh, so first things first, you need to, of course, draw your turtle diagram. You need to identify a procedure, all right, and populate it, fill it with information. What are the details? What's the input, which, which is the head? What's the output, the tail? The front uh, right leg are the materials. Okay, and then the rear right uh, leg would be the who's going to do it, and the front left leg would be, of course, the methodology, and finally the last uh, hind leg is, of course, your targets or metrics. And when you do audit this, it becomes very easy because you just think of the turtle. I'll start with the head. <laughs> so my basic question is, what are the inputs? Okay, and so on and so forth. So uh, there's no rule as to, you know, how do you do this in order? You may feel free to start with the tail if, if you're comfortable with that. Or you may just go directly to the front left leg if you're okay with that. All right. So, and then the second part, of course, is to uh, analyze it. What are potential non-conformance? What are actual non-conformance? Or what are, what are opportunities for improvement? And then finally, convert these questions, convert these analysis into an audit checklist. So you have seen the audit checklist, right? So make sure that the audit checklist contains the question so that when you go to your audit interview, uh, it becomes very easy, okay? You'll just, you'll just follow the audit checklist. Your questions would be even more relevant, even more appropriate, direct to the point, and most importantly, it is linked to the ISO clause. So, are there any more questions? I hope you've learned in this uh, uh, short uh, webinar today. And uh, let, let us know what, what other topics would you, would you like to, uh, to cover uh, in, our, in our future webinars. And uh, yeah, so there are messages in the chat box right here. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, auditing made simple from Joe. Yes, thank you so much. We appreciate it. All right, thank you for your kind words. And uh, so move, moving on, um, I, I hope you, 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 you would use this moving forward and do not forget to uh, go to our Facebook page. Uh, we actually have posted there our schedule of free webinars. We also have full-blown seminars, by the way. So if you'd like to register, you can go do that and uh, you can register through Facebook uh, or send us an email or simply call us. And uh, do not forget, this is a small favor I'm going to ask from you. Help us spread the revolution here. Help us build a community here. Uh, we're doing this free every week to uh, help encourage and uh, capacitate uh, ISO uh, practitioners like, like you and me. So go to our Facebook, uh, don't forget to uh, like our page and go to the YouTube channel as well. We are up uploading uh, new materials like this one into the channel. And uh, with that, I'd like to thank you all for your time. And it's, it's, been, a, it's been a pleasure. Um, I, th I think Mike will also email to you uh, uh, the link for the evaluation. We'd also like to know what you think about these webinars. Let us know what other topics would you like us to discuss. Uh, and like I said, next week, we're going to dive uh, deeper into corrective action reporting. What's the difference between correction, how to do root cause analysis, and how do you implement effective corrective action? So if you'd like to know more about that, join us next week. So with this, I'd like to say God bless, uh, good luck, and uh, Godspeed to all of you. Stay safe. Stay home and stay true to our uh, channel right here. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Enjoy the rest of the day and have a great weekend, everyone. My name is John Fernandez. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much.